Hi there, thanks for bearing with us today. We hope this video can help you with your struggles of solving a system of three linear equations using gauss jordan elimination. In this video, we are going to solve a word problem using this method. But first of all, let's see the difference between gauss jordan elimination method and the Gaussian elimination method. Both of them are very similar, since Gauss-Jordan is like the continuation of Gauss elimination, with the difference that in Gauss-Jordan, instead of only finding the lower triangle of zeros, we also need to find the upper triangle of zeros and then make a diagonal of positive ones. Okay, let's start. Here is our word problem. Justine won the lottery and decided to treat her friends Erica, Luis, and Anna for a dinner on a luxurious five-star restaurant. She ordered three main courses, saffron risotto with forest mushrooms, Tasmanian salmon filet with Dutch carrot puree, and Chinese chicken salad. In total, she paid $365. The Tasmanian salmon filet with Dutch carrot puree cost three times more than the Chinese chicken salad. The saffron risotto with forest mushrooms cost $75 less than twice the Tasmanian salmon fillet with Dutch carrot puree. How much did each dish cost? Alright, now that we know what the problem is about, let's define our variables. You can choose any letter of your preference as variables, but in this case, we'll stick with X, Y, and Z. We'll use X for the saffron risotto with forest mushrooms, Y for the Tasmanian salmon fillet with Dutch carrot puree, and Z for the Chinese chicken salad. Okay, now that we have our variables, let's write our three equations. In the word problem says she ordered three main courses. Saffron risotto with forest mushrooms, which is the X, Tasmanian salmon fillet with Dutch carrot puree, which is the Y, and Chinese chicken salad, which is the Z. And in total, she paid $365. So, the first equation will be the sum of the three courses, X plus Y plus Z, equal to the total, which is 365. Next, it says that the Tasmanian salmon fillet with Dutch carrot puree, which is Y, costs three times more than the Chinese chicken salad, which is the Z. So our second equation will be y equal 3 times z. And lastly, it says that the saffron risotto with forest mushrooms, which is the x, costs $75 less than twice the Tasmanian salmon fillet with Dutch carrot puree, which is the y. So our last equation will be x equal 2y minus 75. So now, we have our three equations, which is x plus y plus z equal 365, y equal to 3 times z, x equal to 2y minus 75. Now that we have our system of three linear equations, let's see if they are arranged in the proper order. First, we'll arrange all the coefficients and variables to the left side of the equal sign, and then constants on the right side of the equal sign. Next, we have to arrange the left side of the equation. The proper order for this is x, y, and z. This step is very important since it will help us later on when we are doing the matrix. As we can see, there are some missing variables, so we'll put a zero in front of these missing variables. So, in the first equation, there is x, y, and z to the left side, and the constants at the right side. Therefore, it is arranged properly. In the second equation, there is a missing x variable, so we will give it a coefficient of 0, and add it as 0x. As you can see, 3c is at the right side of the equation, so we will move it subtracting to the left, and there is no number at the right side of the equation. So, we will write a 0 as the constant. Lastly, for the third equation, you can see that 2y is at the left side. So, we would be doing the same as the previous one and move it to the left side subtracting. There is a missing z variable, so we will give it a coefficient of 0 and add in 0z. 
At the end, we should have something like this. x plus y plus x is equal to 365. 0x plus y minus 3z is equal to 0. And x minus 2y plus 0z is equal to negative 75. Having all that said, the first thing you're going to do is turn this into a matrix. Inside the matrix, you're going to write only the coefficients, which are the number in front of the variable on the left side of the vertical line. And if there is no number in front of the variable, it means that it has a coefficient of 1. Then on the right side of the vertical line, you will be writing the constants. Now, since our system of equations is already arranged in the proper order, we will just write each value on the respective row and column. Let's go. In the first equation, there is no coefficient in front of x, y, or z. Therefore, they have a coefficient of 1. Now, on the right side of the matrix, we will be writing the constant of the first equation, which would be 365. In the second equation, there is a 0 in front of the x, so we will be writing that down on the matrix. And since y has no coefficient written in front of it, we will understand that the coefficient of the variable is 1. Now, the z variable has a negative 3 written as its coefficient. So we write down negative 3 on our matrix, and it is important to keep in mind that the signs must be written down as well, because later down in the procedure, you will have a wrong answer if you don't do so. So it is best advised that you pay attention to the signs of your constants and coefficients. Now, as for the constant of the second equation, the 0 will be written down on the right side of the matrix. Now, as for the third equation, the last one, the coefficient of x would be 1, the coefficient of y would be negative 2, and the coefficient of z is 0, with a constant of negative 75. Please remember to write down the negative signs of each of your terms. Now, at the end, we'll have a matrix, which will be looking like on the first row, 1, 1, 1, and 365. On the second, 0, 1, negative 3, and 0. And on the third, 1, negative 2, 0, and negative 75. Next, our goal is to make sure that these three numbers and these three numbers are zeros. We will call this the lower and upper triangle of zeros. Then we also need to make sure that these three numbers which form a diagonal line are positive ones only. So at the end, the values as seen on the right side of the matrix will be the values of the variables x, y, and c. Now, in order to get the triangles of zeros, both the upper and lower, it's recommended that you use this order. Row 3 with row 1, then row 2 with row 1, then row 3 with row 2, then row 1 with row 3, then row 2 with row 3, and finally row 1 with row 2. This, as always, is just a recommended order. If you find a method that is more comfortable or easier for you, by all means you are able to use it. But this is generally a good rule of thumb to follow this order. Okay, continuing with our procedure. As you can see, the matrix already has two zeros. So we can arrange our matrix so that we can skip some steps and finish quicker. We can rearrange the matrix in two ways. The first one is to switch row 2 and row 3. And the second one is rearranging row 3 to row 1, row 1 to row 2, and row 2 to row 3. So, for the first way, our matrix will be looking like the first row with 
one 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 and three hundred and sixty five the second with one negative two zero negative seventy five and zero one negative three and zero on the third one as for the second way our matrix would look like one negative two zero and negative seventy five on the first row one 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 and three hundred and sixty five on the second and lastly for the third row zero one negative three and zero in this case we will be solving for the second arrangement okay so according to the recommended order the first zero we should solve for is the one at the left corner on the third row but as we can see we already have it so that means that we can omit this step and move to the following one the second zero of the lower triangle of zeros we are solving for is on row 2 column 1. For this, we will use row 2 and row 1. So, to get the zero, we will multiply a negative 1 with row 2 and add row 1 so its product gives us zero. So, negative 1 times 1 plus 1 is equal to zero. Negative 1 times 1 plus negative 2 is equal to negative 3. Negative 1 times 1 plus 0 is equal to negative 1 and negative 1 times 365 plus negative 75 is equal to negative 440. Now, let's find the last zero of the lower triangle of zeros, which is on row 3, column 2. This time we will use row 3 and row 2 by multiplying 3 times row 3 and adding row 2. So, 3 times 0 plus 0 equals to 0. 3 times 1 plus negative 3 is equal to 0. 3 times negative 3 plus negative 1 is equal to negative 10. And 3 times 0 plus negative 440 is equal to negative 440. Now, Let's find the first zero of the upper triangle of zeros, row 1, column 3. But since we already have a zero in there, we can find the second zero of the upper triangle of zeros, which is on row 2, column 3. We will be using row 2 and row 3. So, negative 10 times 0 plus 0 equals to 0. Negative 10 times negative 3 plus 0 equals to 30. Negative 10 times negative 1 plus negative 10 is equal to 0. And negative 10 times negative 440 plus negative 440 is equal to 3960. Lastly, let's find the last zero of the upper triangle of zeros, which is on row 1, column 2. We will use row 1 with row 2 by multiplying 15 times row 1 and adding row 2. So, 15 times 1 plus 0 is equal to 15. 15 times negative 2 plus 30 is equal to 0. 15 times 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. And 15 times negative 75 plus 3960 is equal to 2835. Finally, our last step is to multiply by the reciprocal to get the diagonal of 1. How we'll do this is that we'll multiply the first row by the reciprocal of 15, the second row by the reciprocal of 30, and the third row by the reciprocal of negative 10. So, now we'll multiply the reciprocal of 15 by the first row. And how it goes is 15 times 1 over 15 equals to 1, 0 times 1 over 15 equals to 0, 0 times 1 over 15 equals to 0, and 2835 times 1 over 15 is equal to 189. Now we'll multiply the triple of 30 by the second row. And how this goes is 0 times 1 over 30 is equal to 0. 30 times 1 over 30 is equal to 1. 0 times 1 over 30 is equal to 0. And 3960 times 1 over 30 is equal to 132. Now we will multiply the reciprocal of negative 10 by the third row. And how this goes is 
0 times 1 over negative 10 is equal to 0. 0 times 1 over negative 10 is equal to 0. Negative 10 times 1 over negative 10 is equal to 1. And negative 444 times 1 over negative 10 is equal to 44. So, that means our final answers are x, which is equivalent to 189, y, which is equivalent to 132, and z, which is equivalent to 44. And there's one way to write your answer, but the other way to write your answer is the, which is not using the triple order, which is x, y, and z. So if we were to write our answer in the triple order, it, the answer would be 189, comma, 132, comma, 44. And this is two ways that can be used to write your answer if you're not solving a word problem. But since we are solving a word problem, we must use our answer in a complete sentence. Therefore, the answer will be the saffron risotto with forest motion costs $189. The Tasmanian salmon filet with Dutch carrots puree costs $132, and the Chinese chicken salad costs $44. So, our conclusion is that the steps to solve a word problem of a system of three linear equations using the Gauss-Jordan elimination method is Step 1. Read and analyze the problem. Step 2. Define your variables. Step 3. Write the three linear equations. Step four, verify if they are in the correct order. Step five, turn the system of equations into a matrix. Step six, find the upper and lower triangles of zeros. Step seven, multiply by its reciprocal to get the diagonal of ones. And the fifth and final step is to write your answer in complete sentence. Now, if you're not solving a word problem, then you have to follow steps four to seven and write your answer using either of the two ways mentioned before. Now, let me remind you to check if your system of equations is in the correct order. You have to be careful with the signs, don't forget the negative signs, and answer in a complete sentence if you are solving a word problem. You got a friend in me. Well, you got a friend in me. You got troubles, I got them too. There isn't anything that I wouldn't do for you. We stick together, we can see it through. Cause you got a friend in me. Yeah, now you got a friend in me.